Hey everybody, I'm Joey and today we're grilling steak. But not just any steak. This T-bone is almost three pounds and two inches thick. So get ready to get hungry and follow me as we turn up the heat. As I mentioned, we're using T-bone steak today, and this thing is almost three pounds, but you could really use many different types of thick cut steaks for this recipe, including a porterhouse, a filet, a strip steak, a ribeye, or even like a sirloin or a tri-tip. Because what's most important with this is not the recipe itself, but the technique. You're gonna need a two-part cooking process to get this done correctly, both over direct heat and indirect heat. I've made the mistake myself many times of taking a thick cut and cooking it over too high of a heat for too long, and that's gonna really create a burned and bitter exterior. Definitely not what you want when you pay this much for a steak of this size. So let's go ahead and get this thing seasoned. Uh, I'm just gonna use a little simple salt and pepper, you know, and because it's a thick steak, you're gonna need a lot of salt, more than you think that you might need. Now remember, some of this is gonna come off and stick to the grill grates, during the cooking process. So just go ahead and season it liberally with both salt and pepper. Next, we're gonna flip it and get the other side as well. It's a big boy. Okay, now it's also important not just to season the top and bottom of this, but to also season the sides with salt and pepper, which I've done. So now that the steak is seasoned, it's almost ready for the grill. One thing I wanna remind you, and I say it every single video, but it's really important when you cook thick steaks, is make sure you let the steak rest prior to cooking it. And that will allow it to come up to room temperature. Why is that important? Well, it's gonna create more consistent and predictable cooking results every single time. This steak has actually been resting for a little over an hour. And if you don't let it rest, you run the risk of having it too burned or charred on the exterior while having it undercooked in the center. So we're gonna go ahead and take and put this thing on the grill. Okay, now we're ready to put this on the grill. This has been heating for about 30 minutes and it's absolutely screaming hot. One thing I wanna show you is how we built the fire for both direct and indirect heat. As you can see, we have our direct heat side over here, and we have our indirect side over here. We're gonna grill it on this side for about two minutes a side, and then move it over here to the indirect side until it reaches temperature. Let's hear this sear. Can you hear that steak sear? That, my friends, is the sound of tasty. All right, it's been cooking for one minute. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a little 45 degree rotation to try to get those sear marks going. Been on there two minutes, let's get this dome off and let's give it a flip. Again, this is a big, heavy steak. It weighs about two and a half pounds. I'll do my very best here to get it flipped. There we go, that looks pretty, right there. See, we did our best with the sear marks. It's a really hot fire, so it's hard to get just right, but we're gonna go ahead and let it cook for another minute and rotate it 45 degrees. And now we're gonna go ahead and give it that 45 degree rotation to try to get those nice sear marks. If I can get a hold of it, it's a big boy. There we go. Go ahead and put the dome back on. Leave the grate totally open. You wanna get that high heat. All right, so this has been cooking over direct heat for four minutes. So now we're gonna move it over to the indirect heat and we're gonna let it cook here until it reaches its desired internal temperature. And then we're gonna pull it off. Couple, uh, quick note, we wanna have the vent uh, over the steak and that will force the heat this way uh, under and across the steak. So now that we have this on, we don't have much to do here other than grab a beer, but I do wanna show you something else over here. Uh, in this kettle, we have some smoked meats going. We have some burnt ends and some smoked meatloaf going on for another video. So um, those will be released near the end of summer, so tune in for those as well. Be right back. All right, we're back. It's been 25 minutes since we put this on the grill. 
It had five minutes over direct heat and about 20 over indirect heat. We have an internal temperature of 122 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off the grill now as the temperature will continue to rise another five or 10 degrees as it rests. It's a big steak and so it's a little bit tough to get off the grill, but here we go. All right, this big old Flintstone steak is done and it's been resting for about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna cut it open. But before I do, I just wanna share that you could cook this steak reverse sear style by following the exact process we just did, but in reverse. You put it on the indirect heat first and then finish it on the direct heat. It's a great method. It takes about 30 to 40 minutes longer than the method we just followed. And we're gonna show you the reverse sear in another video. So stay tuned for that. But let's go ahead and cut this open, see how it turned out. Look at that. We have a perfectly cooked medium rare steak. This is so easy, you can do it right at home. Our motto at Red Meat Lover is cooking meat made easy. If you liked our video, please hit the like button or subscribe to our channel. It's the big red button down here. You can't miss it and it will only take a second. And remember, no one has friends over to microwave. We'll see you next time. Ma'am. That is tasty.